today is my Friday off. I have, I'm on one of those 980 schedules where you get like um, an extra day off every other week. So I'm happy to have a three day weekend. So today I'm out here in my garden and I'm going to plant the rest of my eggplants. I have three. Look at how pretty this one is. Isn't she gorgeous? I'm going to put her right here in the green tire. I just, when I see this, it's just so beautiful. And this is how the other eggplant looked. Of course, the winds took out the, um, one of the leaves, but they're coming back. So I'm going to have one. I'm going to have six eggplant plants and I'll probably be giving um, eggplants away to a lot of people, but I don't care, I love them. And then here are the two others. So one is gonna go in the other tire by the loofahs, and the other one is gonna go into one of these wooden um, barrels that I have. I'm also going to be planting some, um, some flowers. Um, I have some more marigolds, some orange marigolds. I'm gonna put right back into um, that middle container there, some more dill and some more, um, what should we call it, basil. Some more basil. Um, I do have a honeydew sitting over there and a sun jewel, but most likely what's gonna happen, those two aren't gonna make it because I still have, um, I have three um, garden beds that I want to put the rest of my melons in, honeydew, cantaloupe, and sun jewel. And two of those containers have um, cabbage in it. So um, I'm probably gonna wait maybe towards the end of April or middle of April to um, plant those and see what happens. It all depends on how the cabbage is doing. The one Savoy cabbage, it's in a, it's in a container by itself. Um, I'll probably be pulling that out because the, the middle, the, I call it the cabbage ball or cabbage roll, um, it's, it's getting really hard and it's getting bigger. And what else I'm gonna do today, I'm probably going to go ahead and put some um, little blood meal around the tops of my onions because I've been spooning them so that the the onion bulb can come out more so I'm probably gonna put some um, some blood meal around just around the top of that and then water it and also on the base of my um, of my cabbages I really don't have a lot to plant today and the flowers should be really easy to plant after that I'm just gonna go in a house and I'm gonna start my flower um, seedlings I'm gonna start more seedlings because I'm trying to attract bees to my garden so with that being said let me put back on my mask because you guys know I have really bad allergies and of course you know I have my video remote here I don't know how to hide it yet and so let's go ahead and get started I gotta go get the dirt start mixing it up adding it and amending it to the tires and the wood um, barrels and we're gonna get started hey everybody so I mixed in one pack of soil um, some chicken manure and some blood and bone meal I did not um, add in any worm castings because like I told you before when I was cleaning out um, cleaning out the tires that um, I saw worms and worms castings is nothing but worm poop and so trust me worms are in these some of these containers doing their thing so right now I'm mixing everything up and I'm wearing short sleeves today The wind came in real quick and dropped my camera so sorry about that and it knocked over my eggplant container with the two eggplants in it but that's okay they're gonna get planted today wow one of them's really loose I know you can't see me 
sorry. You can hear me, but you can't see me. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off uh, for a moment in case it falls over again and get this soil into the tires and the um in the wood barrel container hey everybody okay i'm back I'm trying to talk before another wind came comes so i went put the soil in here i filled it up and like i said on my last video i made sure the soil is going inside the tire all around because of my neighborhood and on my home we get of course lots of ants we get lots of um black widow spiders and those spiders love to li live up in this tire now eventually this soil is going to settle it's going to settle a lot and i'll have to add more but that won't be for a while i just made my hoe and i just added some bone meal now i'm going to add some blood meal and as you can see when i'm working with the tires i always wear my extra long gloves just because of those black little spiders and like I said earlier, usually I have on long sleeves, but it's going to get really hot today. And I'm not going to be out here that long. And if there's a black little spider in there, the dirt has covered it up and it's crawling around. I really don't worry about them. Um, most of the time, black widows, they're more scared of you. They're hiding in dark places under things. So, but I just want to make sure that I don't run into one and accidentally get bit. So, here's also some blood meal. Adding a little blood meal into the hole not a lot i kind of like this um it's a spawn a spama organic blood meal it has velcro most of these have like the plastic zip -tool. this one has velcro and it closes all the time and this one has nothing but nitrogen a 12 on nitrogen you know the three numbers nitrogen phosphorus and is it potassium or calcium i forget and this bone meal, I saw it on here. I saw it on here somewhere, you guys. It's here, you guys. I saw it. Now I'm on camera and I can't find it. Oh, right at the top. Duh, under the sign. 3, 15, and 5. So I believe this is 3 of nitrogen and 15 of phosphorus I think that's what that means so anyway now I'm going to take my glove off so I can feel my plant time to dig in that hole some more and I'm going to put that beautiful eggplant in there oh, I think she's just so beautiful oh my goodness so I'm going to take it like I take all of my plants turn it over Look at those roots. Can you guys see that? Look at all those roots. Yeah, she she was ready to come out. And I'm just gonna flip her and throw her in there. Just like that. I mean, she was ready. She was definitely ready uh, to be planted. And I actually kept these um, eggplants inside the red solo cups but most of the other plants I had to transplant into the 99 sit containers where are my scissors at these two little leaves down here are the starter leaves you know when the seedlings just growing I'm cutting them off because I see two other flowers coming and it's just time and I just throw it to the side and I'm gonna mound this up I don't know if you guys can see it kind of oops put it down well I'm scared to touch the camera I might turn off and I just mound them mound them mound them up I'm gonna plant the other one first because the soil from from the cup was still pretty wet and then when I plant the other two I'm gonna get my watering can and fill it with some fish emulsion or fish fertilizer really smelly and then 
um, water on really good, but oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. And I also got to go get one of the, um, not trellis, but one of the sticks to put in here and, and tie her up, tie her up to it. Okay, you guys, let me get to getting the other ones and then I'll show you once I'm done. Hey, hey, everybody. <clears throat> okay, so I finally finished planting the eggplant. So now I have a total of six eggplant plants. Let me show you. I planted this one, and you will see I put the, um, I always forget what you call these sticks that you put in here. Anyway, put that those in there. And, of course, that's my older one. This is the one I kept saying is so pretty today, and she, she really is pretty, and it's just holding up out here. This is one of the ones I planted last week. This is one of the other ones. Um, I didn't have to put any um, worm castings into any of these, even the wood containers, because there I saw worms when I was digging in there. Like I always tell you, my empty containers, I still wet them. And we know that worms come out, you know, like when it's raining. I still wet them. Now this lady and gentlemen is called a Nostor Nostorum Dwarf Jewel. It's some kind of flower. I heard that it's also um, edible. This was a seedling. It was in my house and I was ready to get it out here. I dug in this container and also saw worms. All I did was add some blow, um, blood meal. I did not add any bone meal. And I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. And I'm going to plant some more today. Because I just think it's a wild looking um, flower. And I heard it's also edible. So I'm kind of excited about this one. So next I'm going to go ahead, get the blood meal. Start putting at the base of my onions and my cabbage. Look at that Savoy. Let me get out the sun. Can you see her? Isn't she gorgeous? I think she's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, cabbage. And put them at the base of my cabbages, sorry. And um, later on, I'm going to water. Maybe I'll wait till a little bit later to put the, blo the blood meal and then I'll water. Um, I decided I decided not to plant the rest of the flowers today because I'm just kind of not in the mood. I might do it tomorrow. I have a notary tomorrow around noon and then either I'll do it before then or when I get home from doing um, the notary tomorrow. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put them. If I want to get my last wood container out and put it out here. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to decide what I want to do with those flowers. So I think they could wait another day. I think I'm going to leave them in the patio because they're done. They're, 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 they're growing up. They're done. Um, let me see what else I need to do. The kale and the collards, I watered them yesterday. They're looking good. The sun, it's about probably after 12 o'clock maybe or going on 12 and you see the shade is barely coming in so I think I put these containers in the right place let's walk over this way I threw the remaining water and fish emulsion on the watermelons I'm probably going to have to put the other marigolds and stuff in here and with the rest of the tomatoes. It looks like that Roma tomato in the back is, it may have to come out. So it looks like I may have only um, one, one Roma tomato plant. And I see a twig right here I need to cut off. I'm gonna cut that off. And tonight I am going to cover my tomatoes because it's gonna be about 48 degrees. I'm not gonna take a chance, I'm gonna I'm going to cover them tonight. So it, we're getting into this time of year. Let me turn this around. We're getting into this time of year in California where it's warm during the day and then really cool in the morning hours. Um, so April, probably by mid-May, 
will be warm at night and warm during the day. But it's just a weird time of the year. Our mountains had, I think, rain yesterday. So it looked cloudy, but then it was like 70 degrees. So it's just that weird time of year for weather out here. So I'm checking the weather at night every day. And tonight I am gonna put the tarp on my, um, on my tomatoes after I water I'm gonna do it like a lightness water on them and then I'm gonna put the tarp on because you guys all saw how hard I worked to get these seedlings to um, plant it out here so I don't want to lose them quite yet I want it to grow I want to see some fruit um, on these beautiful tomato plants so for right now that's going to be it I will be taping on me planting the seedlings so let's get to it oh one more thing I wanted to show you remember I was like where did all my straw mulch go let me show you where it went in the wind I don't know if you can see it most of this is in the shade oops let me see here there it is there's some right there I'm gonna walk in it can you see it there's some there's a lot of it right there. Let me back up. There's the straw mulch. Right there. It flew all back here. Can you see it? I'm wearing sunglasses, so it's hard for me to tell. But there it is. There is all my straw mulch. So, people say, yay, yeah, um, you should mulch and even my that even happens with my wood mulch my wood chips that I put down when this wind gets to kick in it gets to kick in and ugh, the mulch is gone so so far I have not mulched the eggplants um, I didn't mulch them last year and they came in just great I made um, eggplant parmesan and everything so I may not mulch them um, I really hate wasting that straw mulch um, I know it's, it keeps in moisture and everything, but if the wind out here is flying it, flying it away, blowing it away, then, you know, it's kind of like, uh, what's the point? So, let me get on in this house and um, start these seedlings. Hey, everybody. I am back. Haven't started my seedlings yet. I actually went in the house and took a nap. I was a little tired. So what I'm going to do now is take blood, blood meal and spoon around my onions and put some blood meal there and put some at the base of my um, cabbages. But there's something I wanted to show you, something I found. Remember I said that my soil is really rocky and I found a boulder? Here's the boulder. Can you see it? This came out of my ground. This is why... I do not plant directly into my soil because of this. When you're getting rocks like this, boulders, it's, a, it's pretty much time to let it go. So I'm going to show you um, a couple of them that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to turn off the camera and finish them up. Finish them up. <clears throat> Once I get the blood meal in, under all the vegetables, I want the wind coming and going. I hope my camera don't fall. Um, once I get the blood meal in on all my vegetables, I'm going to come and water everything. And then I'm going to place a tarp on my tomatoes, like I told you earlier um, in the video. Let's get this started. Ooh, there's a little baby onion right there. Okay. Again, Velcro. <laughs> I like that. So, um, yeah, the base of the onion is like way down here. I'm just going to take a little blood meal, sprinkle it around there. I 
probably should have grabbed the measuring spot, but I don't feel like going back over there now. Showing up out of there. Let me. Yep. So that's about all I'm doing to the onions. I'm gonna go ahead get the rest of these onions and garlic done, and then um, move on to my cabbages. Okay. So I finished the onions, and now I'm at the savoy cabbage. Flies everywhere. So. Oh, she's so pretty, you guys. I do see some aphids under here, but it's nothing too bad. I'm just going to take some blood meal and just put her, put it at the base of the plant under here. Just give it a little extra boost, you know? It's been out in this wind. And, uh, yeah. I did see a few aphids under here. Not bad. Not bad at all because I'm always spraying. And not on top of not on top of the leaves either. So this one is getting hard. It's gonna be it's gonna be ready to pick pretty soon so now I'm gonna go do my other savoy cabbage behind me and do these other cabbages and then I'm going to water everything for the night hey everybody I am back so I finished um, adding um, blood meal to the soil of all the cabbages and everything so let me turn this around so I went around each onion and garlic and just kind of scooped around the edge, kind of get the bulbs to open up and put um, bone meal in there and then watered them real good. This one over here, um, when I dug down in it, this garlic, it was kind of red. So I wonder if I planted another red onion, but I don't remember planting onions in this row. I remember planting garlics. So oh, we're going to see what happens. Uh, I got some weird ones. That is like a devil's fork right there. That one's all curly and bent over. Here's another devil's fork with the white onions. Um, yeah, I got some really weird ones. I think this is the most interesting one. And then you can see the red. These are red onions coming up, coming up. So I can't wait to see um, what the onions look like. When they're done, they're gonna look like onions, whether big or small. These right here are two extra broccolis that I planted. Well, three. Um, most likely, these are not going to make it. But I planted, um, I put, I kind of scooped around and put blood meal and watered those. Because broccoli, sorry, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, Brussels sprouts, um, in my zone, those are like more fall winter crops so i usually i'm putting them in in um october november i try to put them in august it's still still really um hot and sometimes in september too um but they like more of the cold weather along with your collard greens your mustard greens your turnip greens your kale um kale is a little bit different as you can see i replanted it and they're they're doing okay they can actually kind of take the heat as long as it's not like drenched in heat but they're okay 
Here are my cabbages again. I went around the base of the cabbages um, and put um, the blood meal in there. And I actually kind of like scraped the soil because the, the soil was actually very compacted. So I kind of like scraped the soil around the main stem on the bottom and then put the blood meal and let it sit there and walk to the others and put blood, blood meal. And then finally went and watered everything of course, these are my carrots. I watered this. I put the tarp up on the um, on the tomatoes. And because I got rid of these two tomatoes in the back, I had a little bit more room to kind of pull it, pull the tarp down um, in the back. Um, watered the cucumbers that were there. Because remember, I didn't just plant those plants. I planted seeds also. So I'm hoping, hoping by next week I start seeing some germination i rewatered the eggplants well i rewatered everything um my eggplants she's still looking good she's not in shock she looks happy like good i got more roots for more room for my roots to grow um here's the other cabbage again the soil was really tight so i took my hands and kind of loosened it up and then put the blood meal down there mm. <clears throat> Same thing with this Savoy cabbage. Again, loosened up the dirt around the base, the main stem. Put blood meal. Um, I have been watering my strawberries every day. These strawberries are not gonna are not gonna come back, and and that's okay. But like I said, anything that's empty, I still water it. <clears throat> There's a strawberry in there that is coming back, and this one, even though the soil still is still wet, and these type of raised beds these bags um, the soil tends to dry out very quickly and I want these strawberries to still grow um, as you can see they're really coming in let me come around here these flowers are strawberries those are strawberries so I know you're thinking why you water them all the time you don't want to overwater no you don't want to overwater but these bags become very dry so sometimes I don't water them every single day, but like I said, it was 79, 80 degrees today. I went ahead and just water them. Tomorrow might be like 77, 76, 76. I may not need to water them. Over to my trees. <clears throat> um, my almonds are getting so big, you guys. They're beautiful. Um, I don't think they're ready to harvest until the probably the end of summer and by then you should see a shell um, they're nice and soft right now oh my god they're so furry and soft right now I'm really happy with that and I went and I watered because it seemed a little bit dry this is the um, seco pear looks like these leaves are about to fall off so yeah, that's the pear. That's the pomegranate. Again, I wish I saw some pods or something, some kind of sign um, of fruit, a fruit coming. But I don't see any sign, so um, I don't know when the little pods of fruit or whatever, um, when they start coming. But they have leaves, and it's arrived. This is the Santa Rosa plum. Again, I, I think that's a very, very pretty tree. I just think it's very pretty. So, um, yeah, but I don't see any pods or anything on here either. My neck green looks like we have some life coming in on this side of the tree. Got me a pink flower. Um, I have seen a bee today. I saw a bee um, actually in the wild flowers in the grass. So, like I said, I haven't seen a bee over here, but I'm really hoping they're coming and pollinating um, this tree over here. Again, the peach is coming back. And of course, my, um, my oranges, look at that. Those little bulbs, I'm getting more and more bulbs. So I watered her today, I watered her. She's looking very pretty, so I think we're going to get some some good fruits out of um, my trees this year. 
Also, what else I want to show you? My landscaper came and blew all the dirt. Thank God, because it was driving me nuts. And these are the remaining seedlings I had in the house. I'm going to leave them out here tonight. These are marigolds right here. Those are marigolds. I'm going to leave them out here. They're, they look happy. They look like they're okay. And they're good. So now I am going to go in the house. Sorry. I am going to go in the house and um, clean up a little bit. Clean up my ceiling area and then start... Um, the seedlings for my flowers. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Okay, so it is actually evening time. It is 7.34. Um, yeah, I have forgot that I needed to get the paperwork ready for a notary that I have tomorrow. So I my nose gets itching at the kitchen, I think, because I was outside all day. So I'm finally getting to the seedlings. Which is okay. Uh, I still have my apron on. And when I'm done with this video, I will already eat dinner. That's something else I did before I fried the seedlings. And when I'm done with this, I am going to take a nice hot shower. Okay. Nice hot shower. And this should not take me too long. Um, I kind of prepped a little bit better than the last time I made seedlings on camera. <clears throat> I just got to, you know, these, these pellets, got to crush them up like I did the last time. This is a new um, seedling set. I still have the old one, but I figured, let me go ahead and use the pellets in this new one. Give the other one a break. And then next time I do seedlings, um... I will probably be using both of them. I thought I was going to have to use both of the seedling trays. This one is kind of like stick down in there. Sorry. And uh, let it soak a little bit more. But, you know. And I'm going to show you the seedlings and I'm going to the flower seedlings that I'll be doing. I hope you guys can hear me back. Okay, just had to make sure the volume was up. I, caught, I probably could have turned the volume up for the remote, but I always make a mistake and end up turning off the camera. So, just took like a little five minute break there. I think I did this one now. Yeah, so I'm kind of happy I didn't go and um, try to plant the other flowers today because I had to figure out what um, container I wanted to put them in. You know, these pods, it's nice that they put them in here, but sometimes, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. You can see that this one got like stuck down in there. I'm trying to pull it out. It didn't pop right up. And then when I turn the the pellets over and then I pour water, they just turn right back over again. So it's kind of like, what's the point? But yeah, hopefully these shouldn't take too long to do. It's not windy today. Of course, a gust of wind knocked down my camera earlier today, but it's not like a windstorm going on out there which is good today my landscaper came he cut the grass and i had him here's another one that's stuck i had him cut some weeds in the front and i have rosemary and lavender in front well most of my lavender is almost gone and i've been actually researching how to take better better care of it that's why i'm trying to actually grow some lavender now i love going to the nursery 
but whenever I have to replace like my lavender, I'm usually replacing over 10 plants and lavender can be kind of pricey. And so I'm going to try to um, grow my own and plant it in the front yard. And also have some in the, the backyard too in containers, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this and see if it works out. I'm probably gonna do about 12 plants. Hopefully, I'll, the last time I I put in lavender seeds, they didn't germinate. So yeah, I I hope it works out for me this time. There's another one that's stuck down in there. Good thing I had my apron on. It just splashed all over me. This one needs to sit a little bit more in there. This one's good. I know a lot of people like, I think they're called these pea pots or whatever you call them. But I think they're okay. I kind of like using my own seed mix, but I thought I'll go ahead and use these since they're in here. Just use them up real quick. Here's another one that's like stuck down in there. Yeah, let that one sit. Another one that's stuck. Another one. Another one. Jeez. Here's another one that's stuck. Oh, come on. Maybe I should have did these before I started recording, huh? Shouldn't take so long to take it. I turned around and stuck in here. That one I could do. Jeez. Come on. Okay. And this one. Let me go back. Now I can do them. Smash them up. As you can see, this time I wrote out what I'm planting in pencil. So that way I could use this again and I just got it wet. And I might just go make some copies of it. Come on. Jeez. put a lot of water in here you guys and this stuff is still kind of hard to break and of course once I dropped the seeds um, in here I got my own seed mix I put on top Oof. I thought I was working outside today now I'm working inside let's get this one And they're soaked. They're just really, really tight. This one, too. It's kind of like you just want to get done with this, you know? And the last one. Dropping stuff on me again. Whew. Okay. I think I got them all. Oh, this one. This one too, jeez. <sighs> Done. Okay. So I'm going to put six of these um, spun gold marigolds right here. Um, I actually have some marigolds sitting out there. I forget what kind. I don't know if it's the French or these orange spun gold ones. But the marigolds seem to seem to grow pretty good. And I'm just going to, and that's what the ooh, ooh, that's what the seeds 
the seeds look like that. Isn't that odd? Weird? And you just take one, you just lay it on top. See these? Like really different, black on the bottom. Really delicate. And uh, get another one. So that's three. And then I'm just going to put them right back in there again. Okay, three of those. These marigolds are called the French Double Dwarf. These were called the Spun Orange Marigolds, and they're from Baker Creek. And these are the French Double Dwarf Marigolds. And they come in orange and yellow and mixed colors. So I think that would be very interesting. Yeah, I, I love, have I said it before, that I love spring and, and summer gardens just because of the colors. I just love them because of the colors, really. And um, these marigolds should look like those, these seeds. Yep. Yeah, that mix on me. But I'm only going to do three of these. And again, just the seeds should look just like that. Just put them in there, just lay them on top. And that one went deep down in there. That's not going to. That's. See if I can get it out. Oh no, that may not come out. Well, let's get another C, maybe two. Maybe two will pop in there, huh? I'm getting one more, just the one. And I just want to lay the seeds on top. There it is. Okay. Done with that one. The next one is called the Marigold Dwarf. Bolero, and they're mixed if you can see what they look like red and yellow mixed together or pink and yellow I guess pink pink no red and yellow it says it takes they take about 35 days to bloom and I'm gonna do six of those broken. I'm not going to mess with those two. I'm not going to leave those out. I'm not going to put it back in there. And make sure these are right to lay on top. Two, four, five. Just need one more. Oop, just one. That looks like a pretty, a pretty fruit one. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, put those back. The next are our snapdragon. I believe these seeds are kind of small and I can probably sprinkle more of them in there. I have one solo cup outside full of snapdragons. And it says here, so indoors eight to 10 weeks before last frost, where we're past our last frost date, requires light to germinate, bottom water or mist lightly to avoid covering the seed. Pinching young plants back will encourage more blooms and bushier plants. And they're supposed to be beautiful dark leaves and stunning very dark crimson flowers. And says one of the best. So these are snapdragons. Very pretty. I'm going to do some more of those and then I'm going to look up on YouTube after I get off this video and kind of settle in for the night how to take care of um, snapdragons. I was watching Garden Answers. I think the lady's name is Laura on Garden Answers. Anyway, I was looking at her and how she pruned her lavender and now I see for the last four years uh, I've been replacing lavender that I probably didn't need to replace. So it's good to look on TV. So. I'm gonna pour these seeds out just so you can just so you can see what they look like. And I'm probably gonna put these in a big container. They're real little. 
can you can you guys can you see that they're real tiny so i'm just going to take these first i'm going to make sure that this little teapot foil is sitting kind of evenly on top smash that up some more this one is just I can smash it up and make sure and then I'm just gonna sprinkle them into um, put some more in, into each hole just want to make sure I get them right but I think they're going to look very pretty and bring color uh, to the yard I also have like um, kind of vining roses in the front yard so I have rosemary I have um, lavender and what else do I have? Rosemary, lavender, the roses. Um, yeah, I have a lot of things growing out in the front yard. And once I get these lavenders in here and I get and I'll get some more like wood, red wood mulch and stuff to do the front yard i will do definitely um video taking that hopefully by then i'll have a better um silky stick and tripod by then um, usually sometimes it seems like every year when i do that front yard it's like 100 degrees and it's not that i mean to when that sun comes up like right in your face in that front yard so that was the snapdragon I still have a lot of things left but I, I I think that is I think that's gorgeous don't you I think that's beautiful next ours is that one flower I planted outside it's called the nasturturum nasturturum this is what they look like I think that's pretty and it says annual bright sunny colors, yellow, pink, red, and orange, edible flowers, popular for salads as a garnish. Planning instructions. Start indoors four to eight weeks before the last frost. Of course, you'll pass the last frost or sow outdoors after fall. Sow in fine, moist soil and cover lightly. Vining varieties grow best up a trellis. So I'm happy I stuck that. I keep forgetting the name of those garden sticks. Well, anyway, I'm happy I stuck that stick in there so it can kind of vine. But I also have some tomato cages out there. So I think I may leave that stick in there, but put a, um, a tomato cage around it. And so this is going in row four. So let's see. These are huge. That's why I only had one plant. Look at these. I should have bought more of these. I think I'm going to go online and bake, um, uh, Baker Creek and order some more. So, yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. Let me just make sure these are laid in there. Because all of these um, flower seeds are going to get covered up with that seed and mix right there so I think that's perfect so that's one this one is a little funky looking it might be a dark red or something two three I'm definitely gonna order some more I'm gonna I'm gonna order some more of these these are very interesting and I need three more not you these three very interesting yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna order some more i think i might go online tonight i'm the kind of just to let you guys know i'm the kind of person that deals with a lot of insomnia and i tend not to go to bed um before ooh, before nine because i'm only gonna sleep like four to six hours most of the time it's like five hours and sometimes i'm just laying here if i go to bed early i'm waking up at 11 o'clock at night so this one it's going on eight o'clock i'm almost done with this 
Yeah. Next are my lavenders. So this one may look the same, but they're not. This one is called an English lavender. I probably got this from Baker Creek too or Amazon. I forget. I have had a whole bunch of um, seeds. Something in my throat, sorry. I just ate a couple of Mr. Good Bars, little mini Good Bars. And um, I got all these seeds. So, yeah, I hate when I have to cut these open. I wish they would just open sometimes. Because then I have to redo them with um, tape. Because you, know, you never really use all the seeds unless you're like a farmer who's farming and you want to use all the seeds that are packing sell your produce or something. Okay, come on. Lavender seeds are really tiny like the snapdragon in here. Jeez, this little envelope right here. Let me see. Okay. Here we go. I'm probably going to use this whole packet. So it looks like I'm going to be shopping tonight. Um, something I wanted to tell you that Mississippi uh, girl gardening and couponing mentioned today. If you didn't get a chance to register with um, Lowe's for their Spring Fest, next week on Thursday the 8th so when I go that's when I go pick up my Spring Fest kit they have one every Thursday so it's going to open up at midnight for you to register I really believe that Lowe's probably has a limited supply in um at each of their locations so you want to keep logging in in order to register and and get your get your free gift that's something else i wanted to um to bring to bring up while i'm doing this um i think it's a good idea to get it especially if you're a starting gardener i think it's something good they're doing um so why not try it the kit i'm getting next thursday is um yeah that's it for that it's empty that one it's gonna have a plant some kind of vegetable plant probably a bonnie vegetable plant and um and they're gonna give you some soil and some gloves and some little tools it's like a little starting kit i think it's gonna come with a pot too so i don't need it but I want it. So, especially if they're going to give me another tomato plant. That's what I want. The next one is lavender, but it's called um, Munstead. Munstead Lavender. And it's from Fairy Morse. Probably got it from Home Depot or something. And the, this is the one I planted last time and it didn't germinate. So, we're going to see. I really want the lavender to, to germinate. And it says start the seeds indoor six to eight weeks before the last frost date. So an open ground will expose soil when warm. Then when plants are a few inches tall, transplant to garden after frost. Harden off before transplanting. What did this one say? Does it say the same thing? There are 28 species of aromic evergreen shrubbery perennials, all with small linear leaves and spike of fragrance. Okay. So it does not tell you how to plant them. It just says plant in one fourth depth, half an inch, germinates in 25 to 30 days, base to maturity in the second year. So this one gives you a little bit more information. Um, I am in zone nine and it says for me to plant February through May. We're in April. 
So I'm planning at the right time of the year. So let me open this. If you can, because I had to retape it. Come on. And these were little seeds from Life and Katsu. Yeah, they're tiny, but they gave you a whole bunch of seeds when it says to thin. So that's what the seeds look like, you guys. If you can see it, that's what the seeds look like. So again, let me make sure that these are munched up and ready to go. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Sorry for the moments of silence. I just want to make sure I get these right. Make sure they're flat so I could just sprinkle the seeds on top. Well, it hasn't been an hour because I prepared a little bit better this time. And so I'm just going to sprinkle these on top so that they can wait. You don't really have to plant these seeds too far. You know, death or really tiny. Just sprinkle them on top. Get a little bit more. Gosh, I hope I get a lot of lavender this time. I didn't get it last time. I think that's enough. So I got one little, one little bit right here. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. We'll read it. Now, let's go ahead and put this on top. And I cleaned off my seasoning table from when they were there. Um, the other seasonings were there. See? And I just put that on top. I don't want to smush it down too much. I want the seasonings to be able to come up the flowers. Boop, boop, boop. And just put them on there. And everything's being watered from the bottom. I'm not, I'm not saying you don't water the seasonings from the top because I don't want them to get all messed up. And this is the way they like to. Oh, I can't wait to see these, see these flowers. It's gonna be so pretty. Just have to figure out where to plant them. I have some ideas in my head on, uh, on where to plant them. And they attract bees, you guys. So, you know, that's what we want. We want those bees to come around and pollinate. No swatting the bees, you guys. Yep. Just cover them up real good. Bees and the start nostrums. I could probably put a lot on top because those seeds are huge. And I was wondering why I only had one. That's because those seeds are huge. I didn't need to put two seeds in one seal. I just put one by themselves and they and that one germinated. Well, you know what? I think the other one is um germinated too, but I had I had them in the house a little bit too long, so that's why I'm doing just flowers right now, because I can germinate them probably, they'll probably germinate within a week, start growing, they won't be in the house that long, and I can um, put them outside, so that's actually really good. And it's after frost, so yeah, that's um, that's awesome. So in a few weeks, I will be starting to sow um, corn and 
pro glue i'm going to do some more squash i really want vegan butternut squash it smells so good with them growing and they just they just didn't make it you guys so better better cup and better nut are the ones that um that i want to grow and uh i think i got them all covered up you guys i got my paper towel ready this time so i'm gonna go ahead um put everything together and put them in my grow wipe make sure my grow wipe is set up for 18 hours um the only flowers i didn't do were my wild flowers and it says wild flowers, honeybee flower seed mixture. And it's from Gurney's. Um, these I can direct sow. It says sow seed when the weather is warm and all danger of frost has passed. These varieties prefer full sun. Plant seeds one fourth to a half inch deep and one inch apart in rows 12 to 14 inches apart or sow seed with a one quart of sand and broadcast evening germination should take place in 10 to 28 days so it says here this mixture includes blanket flower california poppy cape forget me not china aster chinese forget me not corn poppy french marigold which i have lacy facilia lance leaf corp corpus i cannot pronounce that Coropsis, New England Aster, Prairie, Coneflower, Purple Giant, Hyssop, Hyssop, I think it's Hyssop, Purple Prairie Clover, Rocky Mountain, Pistemon, Scarlet, I cannot pronounce that, Siberian Wallflower, Sulfur Cosmo, Sweet Basil, I have Basil, Sweet pronounce that and white upland aster and i'm not wearing my reading glasses either yeah i'm not that young so i'm gonna put these into my um my veggie pod is what i'm going to do so that's basically it i'm going to put the um the wicking thing under here because it's already full of water so all i have to do is put the other components in here with the with the wicking sheet and everything and um, sit it under my grow lights. My grow lights is set. I just got to plug them back in and I'm good. So let me find a remote. I always lose the remote. So that is it for today. Just under 30 minutes. We're on light at 30 minutes for this section of the video. I'm done. I'm tired. It is now 8.06 in the evening in Southern California. So as I always say, number one, I hope you enjoyed this video. Number two, um, find peace within yourself and be peaceable with others and um, enjoy your evening. Peace out.